It's time for Auburn's first scrimmage of the spring and the Hugh Freeze era. Who could stand out? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much. For making Locked On Auburn your first list in every single day. Joining us as he does most Fridays for a little Ferg Friday action, Justin Ferguson of the Auburn Observer. Joining us live from Birmingham. Very, very fun stuff there. If you want basketball talk, we put up uh, an episode last night, good or bad. It's there. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, we're very happy when doing that show. Ferg, uh, we get the first scrimmage of the Hugh Freeze era today as this drops on Friday. And uh, let's start with offense, then we'll move to defense and just your big picture takeaways from spring so far. You got to think a quarterback wins, right? Whether it's TJ, Robbie, or Holden, you got to think you're going to get a positive report about one of them from folks that are able to attend this scrimmage. What, What are your thoughts on who could potentially win this first scrimmage from the quarterback position? Yeah, it's going to be a scrimmage that's more situational than anything else. As Hugh Freeze said, they're not ready yet to do like a full blown, like 11 on 11, yeah. like you know, traditional scrimmage. Um, so, situations, I mean, and that's and that's really important because when you're looking at a guy like Robbie Ashford, you know, you're saying, okay, you know what he can do with his legs, you know what he can do, um, mm-hmm. you know, with his, with his, with his athleticism. And he's got the ability to make some really, really good throws. It's just, can you do it consistently? And I think situational stuff is going to be the best way to kind of show how much better he's gotten, how much he's progressed. Um, so I would, I would keep an eye on Robbie for that one. And then, you know, I'm sure y'all talked about it, uh, this week, uh, since, you know, coming off of the, uh, the Monday availability, but like, if you're sitting around saying, oh, there's no way that TJ Finley is going to make a move or have a chance in this battle, probably not paying attention close enough because the dude's out there um, making making good throws and making good strides, and he's just as in it as any of the other guys. So um, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what the word is out of the quarterbacks. Because so far it's kind of been, hey, they've all done some good, they've all done some bad. And from what we've seen, that kind of says the same thing. Like on Monday – you would see those guys make some good throws. You would see those guys make some not so good throws. It's just yeah. in, in a scrimmage setting, in a situational uh, scrimmage setting. Like, what what do those guys do to stand out is going to be the big thing for me. Saying anything good about TJ Finley, like the way people respond to that, Ferg, is crazy. It is yeah. so wild how upset people get about it because in that, like, the 30 plus minute window, probably a little bit over earlier this week, that we got to see, like, I think TJ was by far the best looking quarterback, but we saw him throwing against air, right? I mean, there's a lot of mm-hmm. factors yeah. that go into that, but I mean, I think all of them still like miss throws against air that you should make as an SEC quarterback, you know, 99 times out of a hundred and they were missing them multiple times. But I, I just so far, like it seems like TJ has been the best through the first, what week and a half or so of spring. Yeah. And his numbers, I mean, they weren't fantastic during his first two seasons at Auburn, but they are better than what you got through the air from Robbie Ashford last season. Now, obviously, Robbie Ashford, there's two things you got to keep in mind with Robbie. Number one, he was hurt last season. He was playing through injury, and that right. that will explain some of the inaccuracy, some of the inefficiency, and it, it was one of one of the lowest marks in the country uh, in both of those categories. And number two, that offense doesn't fit him. That, that pro style offense is not as He's right. not as comfortable in that as he is what you would imagine a Philip Montgomery Hugh Freeze offense would be. So um, I, I think the thing with Robbie Astrid is just he's going to be a work in progress. And so for a guy like TJ Finley, when you're throwing against air and you are throwing, you know, um, it just it's just purely stand in the pocket and throw the ball around. I'm not surprised that Finley may be looking better early on. And I think the other thing people got to keep in mind is that this is a clean slate for him, right? You know, yeah. a lot of stuff happened these last couple of years for, for, for Auburn and their players and he's coming back and it's not just necessarily a thing that say, okay, there's no way he's, he, he can ever you know, be somebody who can, who can contribute for you. Yeah. It's a clean slate. This is what this time of year is all about when you have a new staff. And so, um, yeah, don't, don't sleep on TJ Finley. I know there's, you know, there's fans that, that, um, aren't fans of him, you know, for lack of a better word. Yeah. But, um, you know, this is this is a time of year where guys can really turn heads and, and make progress. And um, I would not count. I would not count Finley out at all. 
Right, right. As far as, I guess, the offense outside of quarterbacks, the the offensive line, we're not really seeing a whole lot of movement at the center or the tackles. We're seeing a little bit of movement at the guards. Yeah. I think some of that had to do with Jeremiah Wright being limited, and now he's getting more and more closer to, to you know playing health. And so, But we're still seeing a bunch of Tate Johnson. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. the, they seem to really, really like him, and, and Hugh talked about him in his press conference as well. What um what what are you thinking about this offensive line? It, is it should we expect competition, or is this kind of what it is? I think you should expect competition at the guards. I think your tackles in your center. I don't want to say set in stone because it's very very early. I mean, they're not playing football for another you know five and a half months. But right. this is a situation where your FBS transfers are doing exactly what you've got your FBS transfers for. Mm-hmm. Dylan Wade, Gunnar Britton, Avery Jones. I mean, that's going to kind of be your consistent ones, I think, throughout um, the preseason. And I think that's going to be your favorites going into the season. Yeah. The guard spots are where things are interesting because you bring back Jeremiah Wright, and you know Wright was not 100%. Um, on top of that, you have gotten some guys that at different positions to kind of slide in and give some competition, right? Cam Stutz at guard. You can you can, you can can turn to him because he's, he's a guy who's played a lot of football, but you want to have competition in those spots when you don't have a, hey, we got you specifically to start this season kind of guy there. So, right, Tate Johnson, Isaiah Miller kicking inside to guard. That was something that I thought from the first week of practice. I was like, okay, that that seems like that seems like something you could do if you figure out, hey, Isaiah Miller might not be one of our two best tackles. He might be not better than our their top two tackles, but he top might be five better. Linemen. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so. For a scrimmage situation, I think the big thing for for them is okay, who works best together? Because that's the big thing about your offensive line is that you can put your f- best five out there, but sometimes your absolute one hundred percent best five might not necessarily be the best five that play together. Um, so using those different kind of mixing and matching with those guard spots, I think is going to be pretty interesting. And then, hey, what what else do we see from some of these young guys? Um, because these these snaps and these reps are going to be important for their future. They're already prepping Connor Lou to be the guy moving forward at center yeah. uh, in the future. Scrimmage situation for him. There's a lot of hype around him. What What is he going to do? What is he going to bring to the table? And maybe are there some of these younger guys or some of those, maybe even some of the older guys who, you know, are try- getting a second chance under a new staff. Maybe they can turn some heads here. Uh, well, what about a guy like a, like a Garner Langlow? I mean, they, yeah. they've kind of moved him around. I kind of thought he was a guard. He played tackle in this last uh, this last practice that we saw. I mean, he's big. He's he's got all the he's got everything that you're looking for. And like at tackle, I should say, like you know, it's great to have Dylan Wade and Gunnar Britton. You went out and got them for a reason. But like, you're going to need to have reliable backups because injuries happen and then things are going to happen on right. the offensive line. So like a Colby Smith. Um, you know, what, what do you, what do you see out of him? You know, what, where do you think that I, I think you push a guy like Miller inside just to give some competition and, and see, he might be one of your, one of your best guys at guard, but, um, you're going to need reliable tackles. And so, you know, who steps up out of that group is also going to be key. Right. Right. You got a name. If you had to predict a winner on offense for the scrimmage and it's so hard to know, right. Cause yeah. we, we get kind of limited filtered information from different people, but I'm going to go with a quarterback. I, I think TJ Finley has a chance to kind of, you know, we hear his name mentioned um, often from folks that are in attendance. I, I, I'm throwing, I'm throwing TJ Finley out there. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised in a scrimmage that's high on situation that you see and hear a lot about your, about your passing game. You know, usually maybe in our early first scrimmage, you might hear a lot more about the running game. Cause you usually go run heavy in those, yeah. in those situations, but that it is situational should be interesting. Uh, I'm looking to see just who kind of stands out among your wide receivers. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot of really good reviews early on of Camden Brown and Nick Martin. These the, the big guys, basically. And I've right. written about them recently. The big guys, Camden Brown, uh, Nick Martin, uh, Rivaldo Fairweather. I think the size and the, and the explosiveness that they add to this passing game, it's been such a high priority through the first you know, week and a half, two weeks of, of, of spring practices that I wouldn't be surprised if, it, hey, if your situation, it's third down or, hey, yeah. you're in the red zone, throw it up to the big guys. Let them, let them go to work. So wouldn't be surprised if you hear those guys, um, any of them, uh, out a lot because I think that that has been such a focus. You know what you have in Javarius Johnson and Coy right. Moore and guys like that. Um, it, it, it's a matter of who steps up among the guys to win you those one-on-one balls. 
Who could be an Auburn Tiger that wins on the defensive side of the football? I'm going to predict a newcomer, does it, Ferg? We'll get your thoughts in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Look, the NBA season is here, sure, but March Madness is upon us, and you want to make sure you get in on the action as much as possible. Sure, you've got a bracket filled out, but head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and get in on the action. And uh, they've got a no sweat first bet for new FanDuel customers up to $1,000. That is bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. So check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Ferg, I think we're about to see Demario Tolan, the new Auburn linebacker, former LSU linebacker. I think we're about to see him just go on a run over the, uh, the remainder of spring. I, I think we're going to hear tremendous things about Demario Tolan um, day in and day out. That linebacker room is really interesting because I yep. feel like, you know, we saw kind of those first few rotations that first week of practice, and then they come out and do the walkthrough on Monday. And it's just, it, it kind of, I don't want to say it felt randomized, but it's just like, I think it did show the, the number and the depth that they have at that position where, you know, a guy like Austin Keys might be the third dude out there. It just shows yeah. that I think that there's just a lot of mixing and matching you can do. But yeah, Tolan is a guy that, you know, my buddy who covers LSU said, like, that dude was going to start next season. I mean, you mm -hmm. have Brian Kelly comparing him to some of the best guys that they've had come through there, um, you know, recently at, at the at the group for for linebacker at LSU. I, he's he's a guy that I really, really like. Obviously, his athleticism and his size is just – it's exactly what you want, especially in a system like this. Um, so, yeah, Tolan makes a ton of sense. It was interested to see Robert Woodyard. Um, get you yeah. know, getting involved a ton early, and so I mean that that linebacker room is so interesting because you do have Cam Riley back. Um, you do you did bring in two transfers, but yeah, I mean I think you see a guy like Woodyard, and like this dude was a guy Alabama wanted. This is a guy that was Auburn's right. best recruit um, of the twenty two cycle. You know, this would be a perfect time under a new a new staff to for him to pop as well. I kind of like him next to Tolan. Because, you know, Woodyard, he's like a little bit bigger, a little mm -hmm. bulkier, more of a thumper. Yep. And then Tolan's the dude who's like, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I, I move so well laterally, not going to waste any steps here. Like, I, I can kind of do different things. So you kind of got a, a, a different situation, kind of like a, a Zacoby and Owen a few mm -hmm. years ago. You know, yep. we didn't see as much of that as we wanted, but um, the, I, I kind of get that vibe a little bit from that. Deshaun and Daryl, I think, is a good another good sure. example of that as well. Yeah, you like to have those, you know, when you have two inside linebackers, you want a guy who can be able to, you know, st stick his head in the fan there and, and and really just get after it. But you also want dudes who can dr drop back. And, like, they're going to want versatility among all of them, right? Like, this sure. is not to say that the big – I mean, I think Austin Keys, for a guy as big as he is, he did, he did a good job um, in coverage and, and pass rushing at times for Ole Miss. So, it's, it's, it's a fun group. It's a fun group that's got a lot of growing up to do uh, and a lot of growing up to do quickly. Yeah. Um, but um, there's there's a lot of depth there. There's a lot of options there. I don't think you're going to be in a situation like you were last season where it's like, okay, you only have two linebackers or three linebackers you're using. That's that's not the way the staff rolls, or at least they say that's not how they're going to roll. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the and I think the the room uh, fits that. Yeah, and then let let's look at Edge or Jack. Excuse mm -hmm. me, just for a second. I mean, you're hearing a lot of good things about Keldrick Falk, which I think surprises no one. No. Hearing surprisingly little about Elijah McAllister, the Vanderbilt transfer, uh, why why do you think why do you think that is? I think they're moving him around a decent bit, and, and yeah. you're just trying to get get used to things. And McAllister, if you go back and look at him at Vanderbilt, this is a dude who wasn't like a ten sack guy, but he was a guy that I think he could plug in and, and give you give you like he he reminds me a lot of Marcus Bragg in the in the in the case that like. When you brought him in, you don't see him as a guy that's like, oh, this was this this transfer who was this crazy, you know, starter and, and had all these awesome numbers. But it's like, no, he's going to give you good minutes mm -hmm. and good reps of that position. So I think that's the kind of thing with McAllister, whereas a guy like Falk on paper, you know, five star by some places, high four star by everybody else. I mean, the talent's there for him. The thing with Keldrick Falk was always going to be for me uh, is like, how quickly does he make that jump? Because He's awesome, and he's a he's a great athlete, great size, yeah. and all that. But you know, he played he played a, a small level of high school football at Highland Home, so it's that's a big jump. We've seen guys make that jump before. 
I mean, I always go back to I always go back to Mont Adams. Like Montrevis Adams, if you've ever been to Dooley County, Georgia, like there's nothing there except for a chicken plant. Uh, and like he played really, really small high school football, but he was so good and so dominant, and he right. showed up at these camps and stuff that he did a good job. So. You know, Mon Mon popped in and, and it started to go into work immediately. So why not a guy like got Keldrick Falk? And you also see him Brenton Williams get involved. And then you yeah, you know, right down the road at Opelika. Uh I mean, I personally know what kind of program you're coming from if you're coming from Opelika, uh, with with the way that, that especially on the defensive side of the ball. Right. Um, you know, those guys go to work. So it's like it's it's not surprising to see those those names kind of mentioned early on. But yeah, good good sign, I think, for for Keldrick Falk, uh, more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, predicting a winner, I think it could be any, I could, I could make the argument and see like any of those guys having a good, a good first scrimmage. Same with the DBs, but with another guy that I've been told just from folks that are like in practice for its entirety, Ferg is like how good Jeffrey Embaugh mm -hmm. is like, it sounds like he's really, really turning it on every single day. And he's like, apparently like he's just taking over at, at some parts of practice so far, which that's, that's encouraging. The previous staff was really iffy about playing new guys um, that yeah. quickly. And I think Embod needed more time to kind of, you know, we talked to Marcus Harris. He was talking about yeah, there's still a lot he's got to learn as a dude. I mean, come on. He's, 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 he's from France. He hasn't played football a ton. There's still a lot to learn and, and develop sure. there. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I do like the potential. I mean, looking forward, I do like the potential of a Marcus Harris, Jeffrey Embod and a nose tackle, whether it's Jason Jones, or Justin Rogers, um, you know, up front, like that's a that's a mean front three that you can that you can uh, really unleash, and I think they could they could do a lot for you in terms of the pass rush and the run stopping. I'll say this: uh, going to look ahead to the scrimmage, DB. Um, I, I I wrote about it recently. The 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 star position, that battle, that yeah. You know, there's a few where it's like, you know, Hugh Freeze has made it clear, and and I think it's the, the way to go. That hey, everybody's going to get a kind of equal reps, and and we're going to rotate. We're just going to learn. This is yeah. going to be a spring of learning. And then you evaluate your roster and then you go into the fall, you know, transfer port, all that. Um, I think the big thing for uh, that is that there's a few battles like the guard spots and some others where you can say, okay, there's an actual like real like battle that you can kind of sort out there. And star is one of them with uh, Keontae Scott and, and with Donovan Kaufman. And we've seen both of those guys, guys working in, in different ways. So situationally, um, you know, but you know, in a guy like Scott, if he's not playing star, you can kick him out the corner for right. Kaufman. If he's not playing safety. playing that, you can kick him back to safety. So, like yeah. that mixing and matching, I think is gonna be really, really good for Auburn. But hey, continue to see those guys battle and fight because they played a good bit of football and 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 bring a lot to the table, I think. And that's such a key position group. That's a that's such a like a defining position for Ron Roberts' scheme. Um, so mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot in their plates. Wonder how much that impacts like how good they feel about Nehemiah Pritchett at the corner opposite DJ James, you know, like, ah, we'd rather have Keontae Scott there or how they feel about, you know, who's at safety next to Jalen Simpson. Like, uh, we should probably put Donovan Kaufman there or, you know, so let's put Keontae at that star situation. But I think, I think you need three starter quality players at that at, at corner at and three and yeah. three starter quality players at safety. And then, and then I think you need two starter quality stars and then just mix a match from there. Um, so yeah, it, 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 that movement can really help. Give me a, give me a name on defense. You know, I, I mentioned to Mario Tolan, give me uh give me a name that could possibly be the defender of the scrimmage. I'll go, I'll go complete wild card here. I am really interested to hear what Kay and Lee does in, in a, in a get, get more of a game like setting. Cause this dude is, I mean, look, there's not a ton of scholarship corners on the roster right now. They're bringing a lot yeah. in over the, over the uh, summer. Um, so he's getting a lot of reps. Him and JD Rimmer got a lot of reps early. And this dude's got a lot what you want from a dude from dude who can contribute right away. Um, and so I'm I'm high on Kay and Leo. Wouldn't be surprised if he's a guy that they come out of come out of this first scrimmage and you say, Man, that 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 kid's gonna play. That guy, that guy's making making plays early. All right, I put out the question on Twitter yesterday. I, I asked you guys who do you think stands out in Auburn's first scrimmage later this week? A lot of guys said, dudes, we didn't really talk about, Ferg. So let's yep. react to some of those in just a second. Right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by Built Bar. They've got this new thing. The Built Bar uh, March Madness Bracket is here. So if you've got a favorite bar or puff, you can make it count. And so it's a cool thing. When you vote for your favorite bar, you're entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, Locked On 
a Locked On fan will uh, win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. If this isn't a Locked On Auburn listener, I'm going to pitch a fit. So you got to try Built. Built's the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're amazing. You won't think that they're good for you. So go to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now and vote for your favorite bar or puff. You can pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop on and support your pick. All right, Ferg, let's look at some of these tweets um, in response to me asking, who do you think stands out in Auburn's first scrimmage later this week? Dustin says, J.D. Rem and Javarius Johnson. Quick thoughts on that. Yeah, Rem is a guy that's getting a lot of reps, obviously. like He's very much like Kay and Lee. Uh, Javarius Johnson, I mean, he is he's such a go-to guy, and I think you know, to, to Dustin's well, I think that's a great pick because when you're looking at a situational scrimmage, who are these guys com- who are these quarterbacks comfortable throwing the ball to right sure. now? And it's yeah, you know, why not why not why not JVJ? He's a guy that is not only a great slot receiver, but is also uh been one of Auburn's I think he has been Auburn's best deep ball threat the last couple of seasons as well. So uh, if you want to put on a show, throw it throw it number six's way. Uh several people said Holden Gurner and Ferg, I just have not been impressed. I've not been impressed so far. It's early. There's a lot of time. Yeah. We only see we only see, you know, a, a few minutes once a week, but I just I don't know. I don't know about that one. He's young and he's also he, it's a situation where he's having to learn a new offense. Like, you know, he was kind of the quarterback that you would see, "Oh, okay, this is what a Brian Harson quarterback looks like on film." Yep. That's like and so now he's having to learn a you know, Philip Montgomery offense, whereas a guy like Walker White, if you watch him on film, it's like, okay, you see a lot of zone read, a lot of shotgun stuff. Like that's that's more of the fit. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he had if he had it, but you know, sure. I, I do think there's been a lot more attention on those top two guys. Tim says, I'm still beating the drum for my guys at Kevius Walker. This young man is a yeah. beast, just needs a chance. Why I'm not? with you, Tim. I'm yeah. with you, Tim. I like Zeke. Yeah, he's I good. Li- I like Zeke as well. Um, he he remind when he came out of high school and early on at Auburn, he reminded me a lot of Marlon Davidson and the fact that he could kind of be a versatile piece you can put anywhere on your defensive front. And he's got a great motor. He's got a super high engine. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a number of those guys like Emba, like Harris, that you can just say like, hey, if those guys kind of click and tear it up, you know, you yeah. have a very versatile front. Um, you know, he could be he could be a piece of that as well. Let's see here. C Mass says Rivaldo Fairweather. That'd be a I, I, that would not shock me at all. I've been really impressed with him, Ferg. Big Rivaldo Fairweather guy. Um, it, it's been you know uh, his work at FIU was was incredible. When you consider FIU was probably the only other team in in, in the FBS that had as more of an inefficient passing game as Auburn did last season. Um, but he's such a big time player and he's explosive. I mean, you watch these. You watch these tight end drills. You see him split out wide a lot. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You, you've probably noticed the same thing. I he just moves and explodes out of cuts and breaks. Like, just and when he leaves the ground, when he leaves the ground, he's not jumping. He's floating because, like, he he takes former him a while really, to start coming back down. Former former uh, pretty good basketball player in high school. I mean that that, that 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 translates. You can tell. Uh, Brent says Jarquez Hunter behind the new line. I think that's a good one. I yeah, I mean, if, if they hammer it with, with, with Jarquez, it'll be a lot of fun. I like Brian Batty as well, just because uh, you can see him kind of get some first-team reps and you move him around mm-hmm. and do a lot of different things with him. He's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, again, I think he's a small guy, but, you know, I'm not going to call him Sean Chivers in terms of, like, just running through people, but uh, he's got he's got more pop than people that I think people think he is. He's not a pure just scat bag. He's not as fast as Chivers either. No, not no, probably not straight. Let's straight line speed now. I mean, yeah. Shivers. I mean, people forget also. Shivers was just a tick behind Anthony Schwartz in terms of pure speed, right? And that's that's he was such a rare player, right? Tyler and a handful of other folks say Camden Brown. Um, sure, totally hype, get it. Hype train rolling. By the way, he um, moves so well for his size too. For and the single digit number looks great. Um, you know, you you know, I, I'm I'm high on these guys that have made good number switches. Um, uh, you know, that's. That always helps me. Like when Landon King made his his number switch, I was like, yeah, that's that's that that's that's your sign for star. Um, Marquis Gilbert also making a recent number number change as well. Like, yeah. if you just look better in your jersey, I'm gonna be like, yeah, that that makes sense. And Camden Brown, I mean, I, a, a big guy with a single digit number is is one of my favorite genres of football player. 
mostly on the defensive line, but a big receiver wearing a single digit number is always something you can you can. It's statistically and scientifically proven that you're faster if you have a single digit number. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, there's less stuff on your jersey. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm not used to him wearing four yet. I like it. I like watching it and looking at it. I'm still just not quite used to it. But I, it is I'll, weird. I'll, I'll it is there. weird seeing somebody somebody not wearing uh, wearing four that isn't tank. And right. You it's look like, up and it's oh, like, yeah. oh, he's yeah. like twice the size of tank, <laughs> like height wise. So, um, yeah, that is something everyone's gonna have to get used to. Yeah. Ferg, how can people check out everything you've got going on right now, bud? Yeah, AuburnObserver.com. Check it out. We've got a lot of basketball. Maybe I'm still in Birmingham by the time you're listening. To, oh, I'll probably still be in Birmingham, but. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll we'll see with that. But we're here as long as Auburn's here uh, when in postseason, and then of course a lot of spring football uh, going on. Had the observations from earlier this week. Our podcast talking a lot about that as well. AuburnObserver.com. It's the cheapest time ever to sign up for the Observer between now and eight day weekend. It's just forty dollars for for your first year. Um, just forty dollars. Running out of time, folks. You need to jump to on it. You need yeah. to jump on it. You only got a few more weeks. So, yep. Auburn Observer. Dot com. You can find all my written work at auburndaily.com, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.